Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Ember series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about router and controller, and we're going to write some real code today. Let's do a quick recap of our project. This is an e commerce website which you can see a list of products, learn more about product details, add to your shopping cart, and see the total price. So basically, we have three pages the home page, also the product list page, the item details page with the dynamic URL. And the shopping cart page. So let's remove the unrelated routes we created in the last tutorial by Ember. Destroy route. So let's remove the index page first and then the t shirt page as well as the whole closest page. But let's clear this out. The next thing we're going to do is to add all the routes we needed. So let's do ember create route index, which is the application index page, which is our home page, and then ember g route card. And here's a small tip. If you want to use a short name inside your code, but a more readable name in the actual path, you can override the route path in here. So path shopping cart and save it. So let's run our app to see how it goes. So you can see here we have the application index page and then the cart page. And let's go to the route shopping cart. And it's in the shopping cart, it's in the cart page. Let's remove the, uh, the application message in the application templates. And then let's add something in the index page. So since we have the bootstrap installed, we can just directly use their class. So container, and also I want a margin top five, and save it. So let's back to the home page, and let's add something here, like the product one, and then the product two. So here's the thing. I wanted to click on the product one and jump into the details page. So here we need to leverage the Ember link to component. And this is also the Ember component provided by the Ember by default. And then we need to specify the route we're going to go, which is the item page and the model, which is the item detail, item ID. So this will be one. And this will be two and let's save it. So you can see here this become the anchor tag. And if we click on it, we jump into the item page, item slash one, and you can see here we're at the item page. And let's go back. And if we click the second one, it's going to the item slash two. And you can see here item two works. Besides that, we need to link to the, the cart page. So let's do a link to and then the cart page. So here I wanted to use the, the font awesome. So I need an icon here. So this to FA, FA, shopping cart, and save it. You can see there's a shopping cart here. And if I click on it, I'm at the cart page, which is the shopping cart page. Let's do some decoration to make our page looks better. So I will create a new file, which is the, the home page does us and then I'm gonna import import here so here I want to create a CSS class called cart link and I want this cart link fixed on the top right and let's change some color and also the size and I want to give it a very fancy like box shadow and to save it and back to our home page and we we'll attach this CSS class to the link and we we'll see here this is on top right and I wanted to remove the default anchor tag dex decoration and also make the icon absolute center by using the flexbox 
Then let's go to the shopping cart page to add some stuff. So let's close all this and open the cart. And we need a, a container. And then we need the header. After that, we need a navigation section so that we can easily go back to the home page. Don't forget to wrap the home inside the link to element. And the router property we assign here is the index. So that we can go back to the home page. And let's go back to the cart page to continue adding more stuff in here. Then we will need a summary section which lists all the subtotals, text, and overall totals about the items we're going to purchase. So the first will be subtotal, and then the text, and then the total. After we save this, you can see the table of the, uh, the summary. So the one last thing to add is just the checkout button. So let's talk about the difference between router and controller. It works for the same URL. They have the same name, but they in a different folder. One is under the app slash route, and the other one it's under app slash controller. And then render the same template. The difference is router can only pass model to the template, but a controller you can define the custom properties and actions. So we haven't talked about Ember action yet. It's just some functions you can use inside the template. We will talk about this a little bit more in a future tutorial. Besides that, the controller can get access to the model from the router as well. And there are some other special things that router can do, which it has a lot of predefined methods you can override, and then it will invoke in a different lifecycle with different arguments. So let's jump into the code to see how we're going to use this thing we mentioned. In the last tutorial, we return the item ID through the model inside the item route. So here, we're going to do the similar stuff. So let's open the cart and define the model here. Imagine we have uh, a lot of items and they have a different price. So now we should return those items. You may notice the Ember didn't create a controller for us by default. So we need to create it by ourselves. And do Ember G controller cart. And let's go into the controller slash cart. Let's define some custom properties we want to pass into the template. So first will be subtotal. The default will be zero. And then the text is zero as well. And then the overall total is also zero. And save it. And then we'll go back to our template to replace those value. I went to this subtotal. And then the text and then the total. So this is point to the current controller or current route. And we save it and run our app. And we refresh the page, you will see the value updated accordingly. But instead of shows up a static value, we wanted to see the actual total price. So let's go back to our routes and let's override the setup controller function. And the argument here will be controller and the model. Don't forget to do the super dot setup controller to make sure we call everything that inherited. And also we need to calculate the real subtotal. So we need to do a simple mass and we'll get a model and then reduce. And then we're gonna use the controller.set to set the subtotal. And we save it. You will see the subtotal updated. It seems a little bit heavy, but since the controller has the access to the model, we can directly handle over there. So let's copy this part from the route to the controller. So we need to set up a getter here. And save it. You can see this is exactly the same. We can do the similar stuff for the tax and total as well. And save it. You can see the tax and total are updated based on the subtotal we given. That's pretty much everything about this tutorial. Hit the like button if you like it, subscribe if you want more. So for the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about the components. See you next time. Peace.